Hello everyone, Shadowcat here. Welcome back to another Heroes of Order and Chaos video. This is a guide on the Bone Stalker, also known as the Vistix. Where the Bone Stalker came from is a mystery, arisen from somewhere within the howling wastes of the Great Desert. A Vistix prowls the sands, slacking his unending thirst for the blood of his prey. One of the things that makes the Vistix extremely feared on the battlefield are his combinations of skills, which let him close the gap, stun, and attack with intense power and speed. If Vistix's first skill is Springing Strike, that's his gap closer. It gives him additional mobility initiating his attacks. It does a decent amount of damage when you first land the skill, but if you trigger the skill again within 5 seconds, it does another round of damage and also stuns the target for 3 quarters of a second. Springing Strike does allow you to jump over map obstacles as long as you have an enemy target to jump to, as you can see here from jumping into this goblin camp, as well as jumping over these trees to the knoll camp. Gore is a Vistix second skill. It causes additional damage to be taken by enemy heroes from any physical attacks made for 7 seconds. It also has a small range so it can be activated from a short distance away. Bone Barrier acts like a shield, reducing up to 4% damage. If a Vistix unleashes his stack of Bone Barriers, his target will be stunned and he will heal himself. Rampage is the Bone Stalker's ultimate. It splits his attacks into two and does up to 90% damage per hit. It also increases his movement speed by up to 30%. It allows him to quickly take down heroes and map objectives like Mogwish Slicer and enemy base towers. Rampage does have a short animation, so it can be interrupted if you tap to move too quickly. Avistix has a lot of potential combos with his set of skills. One of my favorite combos is to initiate the attack with Springing Strike, then follow that with Gore to stack the damage of my auto attacks. Before Springing Strike's 5 second cooldown is up, I activate Springing Strike again and stun my target. Then I'll use Blink to get within striking distance again. And finally, I'll use Bone Barrier to stun my target and finish him off. As with most fighters, you want to allocate the majority of your talent points towards the fighter tree, as well as strategically allocating some talent points towards the guardian and the support talent trees. There are many combinations of tablets you could use with the Vistix, but my favorites are Ruthless, Whispering, and Tablet of Desire. The Vistix build progression is all about building damage, but you also have to add in some survivability. That's because fighters have lower health points than other heroes and are usually the first ones targeted in battle. You're going to want to use your starting goal to buy two Squire's Patience, which is a good mix of HP and physical attack damage. Then, depending on how much farm you've gotten when you get back to base, you want to buy one of the items that make up the Akan Cutlass. Next, you want to build some kind of armor like Hades. Then finish off your build with another one of these damage items. King Killer adds the most damage of any item in the game right now. Divinity Sword is also a great item for Vistix because it has a 15% chance to stun and that almost doubles when you activate your ultimate. Savage Boost is a situational item. It gives the Vistix a little bit extra mobility, some attack speed as well as survivability through its harvest. With this end game build you can see the massive amount of damage that a Vistix does to Mogulish. And then just for kicks, I wanted to see what a Vistix could do if you maxed out all his slots with damage items. Alright, well here comes the fun part, some gameplay with the Vistix. Starting off we have a 5v5 on Rift Map. The enemy team is already setting up an ambush on the top lane. And you can see here most of the fighters are already starting with 2 Squires Patience. The end guard doesn't realize the enemies are in the bush and gets easily taken down. With the two squires patience I could easily take down this jungle. And 
and then using this combination of skills I can harass this Jomber on the lane. Doing enough damage to take his health bar halfway down. The Jomber tries to come back to the lane but is quickly targeted. He casts a slow but Evisix is mid-air and it doesn't affect him. Evisix sets off a stun allowing 12B to approach. The Jomber does a nice job trying to escape but the damage from the team is just too much. Here Evisix tries to get a kill by using Springing Strike and then setting off a stun. Unfortunately Paladin was in the bushes and ready to ambush. Initiating battle with the fighter is always risky, especially with a hero like Evistix who has limited options for retreat. And here's an extended set of skirmishes that happen between the teams. And here I'm trying to push the lane, and this nut starts targeting me, and I get slowed, so I'm in a little bit of trouble. Then I see two other heroes pop in, so I activate my ultimate to increase my movement speed, and then I blink away. And here we're about three quarters of the way in the game, and you can see my build here. I have the Akon Cutlass completed, and I'm starting to build a Jade Axe. That's because I'm not the main carry in this match, and the Jade Axe will give it extra pierce through physical defense. So after a few skirmishes and taking down both bosses, I've managed to finish up my Jade Axe and I'm starting to build some physical defense. With this build, Evisix can take down waves of minions without even breaking a sweat. Like deja vu all over again, I'm pushing this bottom lane and the nut is guarding the tower. So I activate my ultimate and use Springing Strike, only for the nut to disappear in the trees. I managed to get away with the blink and then Lemmot teleports in to help. The Demon Hunter gets off a lucky stun with his Divinity Sword, and I follow up by releasing the Bone Barriers and getting a stun to finish him off. Now it's just a matter of pushing down their towers and finishing off their base.
Now that the lane is completely pushed, we can teleport back and spend our gold on our final build. This is a Vistix final build for this match, and the damage that it puts out is just incredible. Now as we finish off this base, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching my video on Abyssics. This video was a lot of fun to make and I hope to bring a lot more video content about Heroes of Order and Chaos in the future. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on my videos. Thanks a lot. And if nothing else, at least you can appreciate that Abyssics has the best retreat animation in the game. Can't touch this.